We can pretend that we're all the same for as long as we like, but there are some damning statistics that say otherwise. Heck, I'm not even the same person one day to the next, so I'm not exactly sure how I can be or be treated the same as everybody else. This is something that smarter men than me have known for almost 3,000 years and probably longer. Men and women simply are not the same. They don't experience the same struggles and they don't experience their struggles, their stress and their survival in the same way. Neuroscience will tell us this with marked differences in brain activity between men and women in their responses to stress. Psychological research tells us this, our almost ubiquitous understanding of fight or flight responses. Perhaps when we're talking about the strong man struggling, they're more appropriately described as avoid and attack responses. But we've also got our lesser spoken about response by females more often is a tend and befriend model. When they're suffering stress, when they're suffering struggles, our psychological research tells us they shift to a tend and befriend model. And this tend and befriend model has become the cornerstone of much of traditional therapy. Heck, even meme culture reminds us that there are differences between the way men and women deal with their mental health, stress and success. So if we know, if we understand, and if we even make fun of the differences between men and women, and certainly their responses to stress, why on earth is therapy so often a one size fits all approach? And why is that one size fits all approach leaning towards a tend and befriend model? And why is speaking about the differences such a crime? If you're a man, a strong man struggling, or a high performer left paddling in mental pain, the system is letting you down. Traditional therapy creates an environment that promotes being heard. It promotes being heard and being cuddled in comfort. It's tender and it's designed to befriend you. But men are problem solvers, searching for forward leaning solutions, searching for forward leaning strategies and searching for action not soft places to land. Soft and assuring are valuable, but to a strong man struggling, they reinforce vulnerability and failure. I am both a victim of a broken system and proof that a different approach is the key to creating success for the strong man struggling. I spent 18 years with the Australian Federal Police. I ran the Australian Prime Minister protection team and I rose to become the executive officer of the commissioner. I was a regular bloke, grew up a regular bloke and played and loved all sports. I had a close circle of mates, a loving family and an extremely bright future. By any outside reckoning, I was a successful man, a problem solver, perhaps an alpha male, but I was at the peak of my powers. To the outside world, I was a strong man. Inside though, I was breaking down. I spent 10 years silently battling a major depressive disorder and a gambling addiction that would cost me $2 million, cost my career, it cost my reputation, and it had me seriously considering the value of my own life. The title of my book, Externally Bulletproof, Internally Brittle, was perhaps the most accurate description of the narrative of my life to that point. Yes, this guy on top of the world felt at the bottom of the heap. At the height of my career, supposedly at the height of my life, I was definitely in the depths of a struggle and I was on the verge of wanting to take my own life. In terms of mental health, this man has no equal. Not through his excellence, but his ego. Following years, decades, and perhaps centuries of social conditioning, this man will not succumb to traditional therapy. Simply to be cajoled with words and thoughts that won't hurt his feelings. It's a fate worse than death. Being heard is great. Being loved, comforting. But in the lack of proactive solutions and being told that it's okay not to be okay, it flies in the face of what I want. Solutions. In the right context and specific circumstance, the intent of traditional therapy serves a purpose. But the simple fact remains that for men, words alone are not enough. And even less so when the voice of reason is one that doesn't resonate with the target audience. You see, this guy would never in a million years go to see this guy, nor would he voluntarily sign up for this experience.
let alone actively engage in the soft talk of a servitude to struggle. This says nothing about the skills, competency or capability of the specialist, nor even the fact that it is highly likely that the specialist has the skills, the competency and the capability to positively impact the struggling man's life. It is perhaps a flaw on the part of the strong man struggling, but it remains a fact that men are far less likely to recognize, acknowledge or seek support for mental health issues until they are presented with an ultimatum, a rock bottom or a dead end. And when they're confronted with these scenarios, often the reluctant man becomes the resistant force where early adherence is often low and hope of success diminishes. Recent studies have shown us that as little as 25% of men would seek help from a mental health professional if they began to experience mental or emotional problems. A fact supported by the disproportionate rates at which men commit suicide, engage in risk-taking behavior, or abuse alcohol and other substances. All highly ineffective coping mechanisms for emotional pain. We can also add with some degree of certainty that the numbers of what would be considered alpha male personalities will certainly be disproportionately represented even in these figures. The reason many men self-medicate with substance, alcohol, drugs, food, or behaviors, gambling, gaming, sex, laziness, risk-taking, or even promises of big things. You know, all of those I'll be happy when statements. It's not because they are solely masking their pain, but wrapped up in that pain is a feeling of worthlessness and a feeling of powerlessness. One reinforced in therapy that gives them a diagnosis akin to a life sentence with no hope of parole. For a born problem solver, a problem without a solution can be a pain too great to bear. The value of professional specialist mental health care is immeasurable, but providing a safe place to fall and digging deep into the past without providing proactive, masculine and challenging solutions does nothing to encourage a man to speak up. Men, strong men, successful men struggling are searching for solutions. They are survived by action and they are supported by purpose. The issue may lie less in the desire for strong men to seek support and more in their inability to recognize, articulate and understand the emotional trauma that they are experiencing. From personal experience, I've often described this as knowing something was wrong, but having little idea about what it was and even less about what to do about it. Not only was what I experiencing an unfamiliar feeling to me, it was also something that I had never seen or encountered in others that I could relate to. The image of anyone struggling with mental pain came with its own socially conditioned construct. To be blunt, my subconscious mind had me believing that only the weak, or dare I say it, girls, suffered from mental health issues. A product of social conditioning, not least influenced by a feminine, tend and befriend based approach to therapy. You see, I was a problem solver, the breadwinner, and the last line of defense. Surely it's not possible for someone like me to be struggling like those people. People like me don't go to therapy. 10 years of that snowball with exponential destruction, and it's a pattern we see in our strong men across all fields, sport, business, the military, emergency services, fatherhood, and life in general. In one sense or another, we're all strong men, and each of us has avoided uncomfortable conversations with ourselves at some time or another. Most won't end up on the front page of the paper, like our famous sports people or celebrities, or even me. But many will live lives of quiet dissatisfaction, on their way to causing varying levels of destruction for themselves, their loved ones, and those that they are responsible for. But there is a solution, at least in part and at least for a start. The key to successful intervention in such men, in particular in the early stages of symptom presentation, is to meet these men where they're at, with language, image, delivery and substance that speaks to them, and provide a conduit to more sophisticated treatment, focused on using the characteristics of the strong man in their own recovery. Strong men will not actively seek out the support of specialists, but what they will do is subconsciously migrate towards voices and solutions that resonate with them. Voices that embody the alpha lifestyle, 
perhaps with undertones of a struggle. A place where the alpha vulnerability can attach for comfort in the hope of gleaning a glimpse at the inner workings and the understanding of where their internal pain comes from. And perhaps, more importantly, how to make it stop. The word make is significant in this process, as strong men are action takers, and that language is important in their recovery. These are men who don't want to talk about their issues. They want to work them out, and they will gravitate towards language and identities that they can relate to. At the moment, those voices center around figures already established in the strong man's life. Their mates, who are most likely suffering from the same vulnerabilities and unable to show it. Their bosses, who are most likely suffering from the same protectionist ego and are still trying to mask it. Or celebrity role models, who have often fallen victim to external gratification and are often unwilling to scratch the surface of reality or are just interested in clicks. We all know where these are heading. There's very little, if any, alpha language and solutions around mental health services and support. The strong man's subconscious is not really interested in being cajoled, cuddled, or told it's not their fault. Yes, we'd all like to believe it isn't, but for strong men, if they own it, they can change it. To the strong man, talking comes with a subconscious fear, a fear of being exposed, a fear of being vulnerable and a fear of losing an identity as a strong man, as a provider and a problem solver. Ultimately, a fear of seeking support, a nod to that weak side that strong men mask with substance, distance or destruction. In my own journey, it wasn't until I began to encounter voices and images that I could connect with, that real change began to emerge. There were very non-traditional therapists like David Goggins, my mates from SAS Australia, Ed Milet, Andy Frisella, Jocko Willing, Dr. Joe Dispenza, and others. And in them, I started to hear my own story. All of these influences, strong men, successful men, men who had faced adversity, some physical, most mental and emotional, but they had all forged genuine paths to fulfillment. They had all found varying levels of success before their worlds fell apart and all had varying level of mental health, health depths and all had found practical steps to not only survive their struggles, but use them to drive even more fulfilled lives. This further enhanced their strong man tag in the process. These were the openings to my therapy, not complete, but the permission to explore more options, listen to stories, understand that other strong men struggle and also that my struggle didn't preclude me from a future of success, nor did it require me to hand in my strong man membership. It helped me embrace more formal treatment. It helped me understand the practice of recovery as it related to me. And it helped me grow confident in my place in the world. No longer a strong man masking a struggle, but one making the most of his situation to create success from the strong foundation of rock bottom, just as others had before me. What I came to experience as I traversed my own path through this process is that there is that it is less likely that strong men struggling are actively avoiding a confrontation with their own vulnerability. But more simply, that in the absence of a recognizable voice, image and solution, they have no clue what they are dealing with until they burn the whole world down, till there is nothing left to see but their pain and all its glory. As a new, and I'm sure a lot less famous voice in this limited space, I am constantly amazed at the amount of men that reach out to me to share their own experiences. Experiences that they are still yet attempting to understand themselves. The conversation though invariably starts out with some version of that sounds exactly what I'm going through. And then they'll trail off into specifics. It's clear to me that strong men are aching for a way to work through their struggles. And they are especially keen to identify and work through them before they burn all of their bridges, before they lose families, livelihoods, and in far too many occasions, lives. Einstein said that you can't solve a problem with the same kind of thinking that created it. But it's also highly unlikely that the thinking and the mindset that we're speaking about with our strong men is going to freely walk forward and seek professional support as it is currently presented. Should they? Of course. 
but will they? No. And so how do we help bridge that gap and get them access to better, more purposeful mental health? The way to win any war is not to constantly bombard your opponent with strongly held views and rhetoric. No matter how right you are, in the absence of a common language, common ground, or common understanding, your efforts will only ever be met with conflict, resistance, and avoidance. Your message may be valid, your reasons sound, and your intentions good, but we have to remember our audience. Strong men struggling, not only with a significant battle of addiction, affliction, or confliction, but battling to understand themselves, what the issues are, and a long and storied history fearful of being vulnerable. The key to meeting these men where they are at is not to continue to perpetuate a lie that we all, men and women, are the same and that feminine-focused traditional therapies are suitable for all. They simply are not. The key is, is a message delivered by those with a knowledge not only of the subject matter but also an alignment with the sufferer to create a greater opportunity to bridge the gap between men and mental strength and conditioning. Mental health paints a deceptive picture, but for the strong man struggling, the goal should be to meet them where they're at, with language, image, delivery, and substance that speaks to them. Leveraging that connection to provide a conduit to more sophisticated treatment, focused on using the characteristics of the strong man in their own recovery. Yes, mental health paints a deceptive picture in the strong man struggling. Whether you're bouncing off rock bottom, forging your path of purpose, or standing proudly on the other side, our language is different. To bridge the gap, it's time for us to develop a new direction.